Hello guys, in this video we will be discussing about the development of lateral surface of a cylinder. The question will be something like this. Construct the projections and the development of the surface of a cylinder with 50mm base diameter and 70mm axis standing on its base on HP. It cuts by the section plane 45 degrees inclined to HP and bisecting the axis. So we need to develop the surface of the cylinder. So as usual like in the previous case, the, the first half is basically this uh, the solids question and the second half will be the cutting axis and everything. So, if you, are, if you are drawing it, it will be something like this. This is the cylinder. So, this is the extracted board, that is the stretched out thing. That means if there is a paper around it and it is stretched out, it will be something like this. We have the top and base also, we will be having the top and base also. So, we will come to the AutoCAD and start drawing it. So, since this is resting with its base on horizontal plane, we have to start from the horizontal plane. So, let me start with the straight line, like say 100 mm. Then, this is the reference line. So, I am selecting a circle here and uh, specify the center and the radius is how much? The 50 mm base diameter so therefore radius is 25 so 25 so this is the base so i can select it and give some line weight to it because this is visible to me so line weight is given now this particular thing can be divided into number of equal parts depending upon our requirement because uh, we can't simply go with the four end points say suppose this one we have one two three four four end points with these four end points we can't directly go so we can divide the circle into imaginary eight or twelve parts depending upon your requirement here in this case i am thinking of making it into eight parts it will be easy to us. So I am selecting this one. I will go to the array option. I will go for the polar array. I will select the object as this line and press enter. And select the center as this line and press items as 8 around 360 degrees. Let me preview it. So preview is good. So I accept. So this is the imaginary lines. So I am not highlighting them because they are all imaginary lines. Now since this is resting with its base on horizontal plane, we can have the projection up to this point. So from here to the reference line is there. So after that uh, we have the axis. Axis height is given as how much? It is 70 mm axis height is given. So from here, if we have a straight line from here to here, from this point we will be having the axis. From this one is how much? 70. 70. So this is the axis line. Now uh, we can draw uh, the end lines. That is, since it is a cylinder, it will be looking like a, a rectangular box to us. So I am finishing the rectangular box. So now you can observe that this one, this one, and uh, the bottom is also visible to us. The bottom line also I am drawing it. So whatever these things are there, this line is not uh, one. 2, 3, and 4. These 4 are the visible lines to us. So I am keeping that as highlighted. That is, line weight is going to it. Remaining, I am not keeping. So, whatever the imaginary lines are there, those things also I want to project it upwards. So, from this point, I will project it until this one. As well as from this point, we will project it until this one. So, these are all imaginary for our reference purposes. So, and now we can give the line weight. Uh, sorry, the annotations can be given. So, I am giving, say, it as A. Let me go with uh, some 4 in This is A. In brackets, 1. A and bracket one. Similarly, we can go with the remaining points also. This is B2, C3, B4, E5, F6, G7, H8. In that way, you can give the names. So, this is B2, this is C3. Why I am giving the two names here? One is uh, for the above plane, that is the top plane, and one is for the bottom plane, what we are talking about. So this is D and 4. And as you can see, these are all the projections we are talking. So that is the reason why I am giving the small letters only. E5, F6, G7, this is H8. Similarly, we can give the names in the top and bottom also. So this one becomes top. So this one becomes A dash, A dash. This one becomes B dash and H dash, B dash and H dash. This is P dash, G dash. This is F dash, D dash, and lastly, this is E dash. Similarly, here also we have. Uh, Names. This is one dash. This is two dash. Eight dash. The very important thing is that whenever we are uh, working on these things, especially development of surfaces and solids, these type of problems, whenever it is there, there and there itself, we have to go for the writing the annotations because there is a high chance of uh, uh, misplacement or misjudging the point. So that is the reason why whenever we are or drawing something, then and there itself finish the annotations so that we will not get confused. 
If not, there is a maximum possibility that we will get a and finally this point is finished. So these are all the points which are there till now. Now, the second part of the question, it is, it is cut by a section plane 45 degrees inclined to HP and visible in the axis. Since this is inclined to 45 degrees to HP, this particular, uh, whatever the sectional plane is there, will be visible or this angle will be visible in the vertical plane. That is, on the above the x vector. So say supposingly I am drawing a straight line like this, of some say 100 mm. And uh, this one is having an angle of 45 degrees. So this is the sectional plane which is visible to us in the vertical plane. So where is that? It is 45 degrees inclination is done to HP, okay, and bisecting the axis. So that means that this particular line or the axis, this particular uh, cutting plane is exactly at the center point of the axis. That is what he is saying. So we have to place that axis in such a way that this is bisecting. So these two lines should be intersecting at the midpoint of the axis. So that is the plane. So this is the cutting plane. If you want, you can write this as the cutting plane. So once this is cut, the above part is totally cut and below is left over. So whatever the above part is there, that means this one and this one is also not visible to us. So those two things should be should not be highlighted now. So from here to here, and from there to here, then from there to here, and from here to here. These are all the things which will be highlighted. This one is not highlighted, that one is also blue. So now this line, small line, this bottom line, and this line. These things will only be highlighted because that is what is left over and remaining is not left. And you can see it is cutting hole through. Therefore, here, whatever we are seeing from the top view, after the truncated option, after the cutting is done, this total is sliced a bit. So therefore, whole thing should be hatched. If you want, you can give me a bit of hatch enter. So add big points. So this is the big points I'm selecting. This total should be hatched to me. So I'm selecting all this in the center. And even this one is also, I want to go with the uh, ANSI 31. Okay, so hatching is done. This is all truncated because it is cut off. So now, what about the, uh, what is the final question? Develop the lateral surface. So once uh, we want to develop it, we have to draw a separate section here or the, the whatever the paper is bound around it should be kept aside. So if you are drawing a straight line, this line should be of how much length? It should be of the length of this total circumference. Circumference. What is the circumference? It is pi into d, that is 3 by 141 into 50, which is 157.0796, approximately 157. So that means we can select the straight line. We can select the straight line and draw with 157 mm like this and with 70 mm height and finish this rectangle like this. Like this, finish this. So this is the whole sheet which is around it. So <clears throat> now divide this one into number of equal parts as it is you have done in the circuit, whatever the top view is there, how many number of divisions you have done here, the same division should be done here. In this case, I have done 8. So here also, I go for DIV and select this line and divide it into 8 parts. It is not visible, that means formatting is not done. Go to the point style and change the point style like this. So once this is done, simply copy this one, copy and save this as base point. At each and every point, you can simply paste it. So that the, whatever the uh, divisions which are done on this thing, extra divisions are the imaginary lines are there, no? those all imaginary lines are here. Now give them names, simply can give them names. So this one becomes A. As you can see, I am giving capital letters here because uh, this is original, not the projection. So we have to give the capital letters only in this case. So this is A, then this is B, and this is C, this is B, E. Of course, annotation is taking too much time, but it should take because we don't want to get confused. So definitely we have to fill these up. After a, sort, a certain amount of practice, you might simply, by looking at it, you can understand that this is that one, that is that one, you can understand it. Until you get a good grip on this, you have to go with this. See, you can see, we have started with here and again finished with here. So, same thing in the bottom line also. This is one. This is one. Just uh, select it, copy it, paste it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, again, finish with the one. So now, whatever the points are there on the cylinder, that is by the uh, cutting plane, what are the points of plane, those all points will be shown on these imaginary lines, so that we can uh, find out the structure of the development of the surface. So five, it is almost over with the annotations. Once this is finished, we will go with the points obtained by the cutting plane on the surface. Seven, and finally this is eight. So now, for easiness sake, I am giving points here. So this is first point, repeat second point, and uh, we have eighth point also. This is third point, this is fourth point, and this is we can give the names here itself or else uh, I'll give the names here. On A1, A-1 dash, dash, I have P1. So whatever this is there, I'll select it and use copy command. And instead of taking this as my base point, I'll select this as my base point and keep it here. So that is the first point. And also we have it here, here also. So, okay. See, I'm easily able to copy it because you can see this line and this line are both on the same straight line. You can see. So that it will be easy for you to copy paste. So if you want, you can use the same method. If not, uh, when you're copying, just be careful that you're exactly copying the same. 
So now I'm selecting the P2 point. So that is the point. Here's the point. Again, on the H and 8 dash also there. So H and 8 dash also here. So these two things. Then third point that is C and G. So copy. At this point, this is at C and this is at G. And next is F and D. Copy. From here, this is D and this is F. And finally, this is E point. E point is only one point. So this point. So this is F. So you can give the names P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8. And again, last is P1. So now I'll use polyline command. I'll select 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and again 1. So these things is wrong. And I'm using another polyline. And I'm joining the, the first point to bottom point, and then again to this point, and again to the point. Uh, whereas in the pyramid, uh, in the prism case, I have not done like that. I have selected the whole with one polyline. But in this case, we have to use two polylines. The reason is very simple. So we are using poly edit command, PE command, for editing this line into a fit option that is we want to have a curve here because this is a cylinder not straight lines are the edges uh, which are there here these are all imaginary lines and this is a curve which are updated so this is the second one is the second polyline this is another polyline both polylines I select and give some line and if you observe carefully the, the bottom is also there here so this bottom is also should be taken care of it should be drawn some so this is how it will be looking like right so that's all about the development of the surface of this particular question of the cylinder so uh, in this, what we have done, uh, find out is this one. So, pi d information should be shown in the AutoCAD here. We will write a text like this. This is pi d is equal to something. How it is obtained. And uh, what are the dimensions is known to us? This all should be shown. That is, this axis length, which is 70 mm, and the diameter, which is 50 mm. These things all should be shown here, definitely. So, that is about this thing. Understood? So, Z enter, E enter. So, this is the development of the cylinder, which is resting with its base on horizontal plane. And there is a cutting plane which is 45 degrees to HP. And okay, 45 degrees is not shown. So that is also should be shown. So this line and this line. This is 45 degrees. So cutting plane is 45 degrees to HP. And uh, next, uh, it is bisecting the axis. So that is about the development of the surface of the cylinder which is truncated. See, the highlighting is very much important in this case. If you are seeing, the bottom part is highlighted here. And this is totally highlighted. And here is also, this is bottom part is highlighted on the top part. So, which this basically means that if there is a piece, this highlighted piece is there, supposingly, and that is enough for you to create a cylinder of this shape. That means if you want to have such type of shape somewhere uh, on something like a chimney or a uh, outside pipe or something, then simply we can have a sheet like this, which is cutting the shape, and then if you roll it and paste this one and one and do spot welding to it, then automatically you'll get a cylinder which is having this. Shape. So that is the important thing about it. So that is about your uh, development of the lateral surface of the cylinder. Thank you.